What is going on guys, it's Dealer here back again, and today we're talking games, 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 and an event or two. We're also playing a little bit of Control on the Xbox One X. Been getting a lot of questions about the game. Maybe I'll pin a comment, you guys got any comments about the game, let me know, maybe I can answer them after the video, but let's get into the topic. Now as you guys know, we have a podcast called RDX Real Deal Xbox Podcast, where we talk about a ton of different news in depth. There's actually a playlist for this, you get bored, you're at the gym, whatever, you give it a listen. Well, we talk about a lot and not everybody can catch every single topic i get a lot of messages from people saying hey can you sum up some of the interesting things in a video well this would be one of those videos let's get into the first topic now while we are going to cover some unannounced things coming from xbox let's get into aaron greenberg's comments on japanese titles first if you didn't know aaron greenberg is basically the games marketer at xbox and he had this to say in a recent interview greenberg said that the situation like the one with sega and fantasy star surprised localization for the xbox Xbox One is in fact mutually beneficial as it provides Microsoft and the Xbox with Japanese themed content. This exposes a certain audience, in turn hopefully rewarding Japanese creativity. Now while speaking on this he says it's great for us, it's great for Sega and kudos to Phil for building these relationships. Kudos to Phil for going to Japan over and over to meet with those teams. He says, what's great is if you go on those types of trips with Phil, he sits down there and actually plays those types of games. He gets deep into the weeds. Aaron concludes by saying, it's fun. It's what makes the industry so fun. It's the love of games and how games bring joy to people's lives. Some of the best creators in the world are from Japan. And if we can help bring their creations and their creativity to a broader market, I think that's a great thing. Now, first and foremost, let me know if you guys think that's a great thing. Honestly, even though I'm not into these types of games Aaron is talking about, I completely understand why they are doing this. I also agree with what he says on the fact that gaming is really about fun. It's about joy. It's about escaping problems. And too many have gone out of their own way to turn it into something negative. Leveraging drama and propaganda, well, of course, for what we all don't like, negativity. But regarding Japanese support on Xbox, let me know your thoughts. I think with something like Project xCloud in the wings right around the corner, there is more of an appeal to these developers than ever. The game doesn't necessarily have to sell well on the Xbox One platform in North America. The Xbox platform in any particular region, Project xCloud allows them to bring Xbox games to all regions without the use of an actual Xbox console. So let's say you get Japanese title number 37, and that doesn't have the biggest appeal here in the States. Maybe in Japan, where there is a massive adoption rate towards mobile gaming, they can just stream that game to their phone on their ridiculously fast internet. Maybe in a region where there isn't even an Xbox in a store, they can have access to Project X Cloud. Keep in mind, this is Microsoft's overall goal when it comes to streaming, and they can stream those more Asian style titles that they may be into. This is Microsoft's long-term goal. It doesn't have to sell well here in North America when it can be streamed all around the world. Just something to think about. It was actually a really good point my buddy Fonzarelli thought of and uh, you know what it makes perfect sense. Next up, yet another interview by Aaron Greenberg. Yes, this guy's been out there doing work here lately, and he has a lot to say on 2019's XO 2019. Some really interesting stuff here. Greenberg says that they have some surprises in store. He reiterates this a few times in the interview. He also says we have a lot of content coming from both Xbox Game Studios as well as third-party partners. He did actually follow this up elsewhere and say that they actually have unannounced games that will be at XO 19. Now the question is, are they first or third party, maybe even both? And what are these games? I've heard people saying Fable. Honestly, I do not believe that will be the case. I've heard people talk about a few other titles. My question to you is, what games do you think will be at XO 19? Do you think they'll be big titles like the next Fable game, something that they would traditionally leave for E3, or perhaps something smaller? Let me know down below. Also, and just as importantly, are there new studio acquisitions 
acquisitions to announce. Keep in mind that at last year's XO18, they did announce studios like Obsidian and In Exile. But hey, let me know your thoughts down below. Of course, share this with a buddy, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, maybe learn something today. And of course, I am always trying to keep up with the latest in the world of Xbox. Anything new that happens, I try to keep you guys up to date. And we are all looking forward to more games from Microsoft. Speaking of new and more games, we are getting Gears of War 5 here soon. I will have an early copy and I will have a review up on that embargo date, so keep it locked here. I do appreciate the support, guys. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. Check the description for the link to the source of this information, as always. And of course, there's a Patreon link. If you want to join the channel, support the content that you may or may not like, hit that join button. Again, I'm Dealer. I'm out.